my name is Adam Corbridge. Uh, I'm a potter. I've been a potter for about five years now, and this is a look into some of the things I do. This specific technique comes from Korea. It's a form of making large jars to store and ferment kimchi. Uh, this is kind of my own interpretation of it, and uh, it's just how I build bigger pots. The biggest part of the technique is in the way you add the coil to the pot in a pinching manner to combine the two uh, pieces. When you pinch it like that, it compresses it and uh, lifts your walls higher as well. And then <clears throat> after you get the coil on, you paddle the sides and that compresses the clay, makes it stronger while also bringing the walls up higher as you squish the walls thinner. And uh, with this clay, it's a low fire earthenware, uh, a, lot, a lot lower fire than I usually use. It's uh, very nice for this kind of technique. It likes to stick together better without really working it too much. Once I'm done with this, I will add texture and a glaze to fit the pot. But for now, this is what it is. Most of my work is functional, like tableware, cups, bowls, pitchers, platters. So sometimes I like to get out of my comfort zone and build big vases. It's one of my favorite forms to build, but I don't get that much opportunity to build them because I build so much space in my kiln. So therefore I can only make so many. So I'm probably only on about you know, 10 big bases. Uh, lately, I've also been building and making pictures with this technique. This is a very similar technique, only instead of uh, coils for about two thirds of the pot, I use a slab that I roll around. And I don't know, something about pictures really catches my eye. A uh, big part of who I am as an artist is to leave me in the pot to leave the indents for me making it. I don't like to get rid of all the lines and the dimples from me pinching and pulling and paddling and scraping it down. I like to leave my presence in it as a way to kind of immortalize my work. I want people to be able to see these in the future and be able to see how it was made, to be able to see my, be able to see my hands on the clay. I like to use earthy tones that I get inspiration from by uh, old Germanic pots using ash glazes that produce nice green earthy color. And I don't know, I'm not all that interested in the bright ceramics that are made today. The, to me they're boring. I'd much rather create something that looks like it was, you know, just picked out of the earth. And I want it to match that style. So I look for glazes and slips and I I go for that tone. I have created a glaze out of a local clay found here in Smithfield, Utah, and I formulated a glaze with it, and you know, now that's part of me. That, that glaze says it all. Most of the time I throw on the wheel, but lately I've been getting into hand building and making these more loose forms, and I've actually really enjoyed it. I'm still learning, but 